Good morning. I am Dr. Ashma and in this video we will be seeing the gross anatomy of dural folds. What are dural folds? They are double folds of meningeal layer of cranial dura mater. I repeat dural folds are double folds of meningeal layer of cranial dura mater. The cranial dura has two layers the outer endosteal layer and the inner meningeal layer. This inner meningeal layer is thrown into double folds in some places. These double folds of meningeal layer of cranial dura mater form dural folds. In this specimen you can see the meningeal layer of dura mater covering the brain and this has been placed in the cranial cavity for better understanding. There are four dural folds. They are the fax cerebri, the tentorium cerebelli, the fax cerebelli and the diaphragma cella. The four dural folds are fax cerebri, tentorium cerebelli, fax cerebelli and diaphragma cella. Now let's see in detail about fax cerebri. The word fax means sickle shaped. To study about the fax cerebri, let's reflect the meningeal layer of dura mater as shown leaving behind a midline part. Now when I remove this midline segment, you will be able to appreciate that the meningeal layer of dura mater has invaginated into the median longitudinal fissure between the two cerebral hemispheres. This fold is the fax cerebri. You can appreciate the sickle shaped fax cerebri. This is the superior margin of the fax cerebri. This is the inferior margin which is free. The anterior end which is narrow and is attached to the crystal galley of ethmoid bone and the posterior end which is broader and rests on the tentorium cerebri. To study the attachments of fax cerebri, let's see some bony features. This is the crystal galli which is a part of ethmoid bone. The anterior end of the fax cerebri is narrow and is attached to the crystal galli of the ethmoid bone. Now you can see the fax cerebri anterior end is narrow and is attached to the crystal galli of the ethmoid bone. The posterior end of the fax cerebri is broader and is attached to another fold of dura mater called the tentorium cerebelli. Now you see the posterior end being attached to the tentorium cerebelli. This is the superior margin of the fax cerebri which is attached to the sagittal sulcus present on the inner surface of the cranial vault. This is the inferior free margin of the fax cerebri which rests on the corpus callosum. In this specimen, we have removed the cerebral hemisphere. You can see the fax cerebri. It has two surfaces, namely the right and the left, which are related to the medial surfaces of the corresponding cerebral hemispheres. Please observe that the posterior end of fax cerebri is attached to the superior surface of tentorium cerebelli. This is the line of attachment of fax to the tentorium. Now let's see the sinuses related to the fax cerebri. This is the superior margin of fax cerebri which is attached to the superior sagittal sulcus. The sinus related to the superior margin is the superior sagittal sinus. This is the inferior free margin of the 
fox cerebri the sinus related to the inferior free margin of the fox cerebri is the inferior sagittal sinus this is the junction between the posterior end of the fox cerebri and the tentorium cerebelli at this junction there is another sinus called the straight sinus thus the three sinuses related to the fox cerebri are superior sagittal sinus inferior sagittal sinus and the straight sinus now i am dissecting the upper attached margin of the fox cerebri in order to show you the superior sagittal sinus now i am putting the forceps into the superior sagittal sinus which is a venous channel situated in the upper attached margin of the fox cerebri this is to emphasize the presence of superior sagittal sinus in the upper attached margin of the fox cerebri the inferior free margin of the fox cerebri lodges the inferior sagittal sinus this inferior free margin along with the inferior sagittal sinus rest on the corpus callosum having seen the fox cerebri in detail now let's see in detail about the tentorium cerebelli the tentorium cerebelli is present in the posterior cranial fossa it separates the occipital lobe of cerebrum above from the cerebellum below there is a u shaped notch along the free margin of tentorium cerebelli and this is called as the tentorial notch to see the tentorium cerebelli let us remove the brain from the cranial cavity now you can see the cerebellum below and the occipital lobe of cerebrum above between the occipital lobe and the cerebellum you see a fold of dura mater this fold of dura mater is called as the tentorium cerebelli turning to the other side again between the occipital lobe of cerebrum above and the cerebellum below there is a fold of dura mater invaginating this fold of dura mater invaginating between the two is called as the tentorium cerebelli tentorium cerebelli forms the roof for the cerebellum having removed the cerebral hemisphere we can clearly see the tentorium cerebelli in the posterior cranial fossa and this u shaped notch is the tentorial notch which is present to allow passage of the mid brain to study the attachments of the tentorium cerebelli let's see a few bony prominences this is the anterior clinoid process this is the posterior clinoid process this is the superior margin of the petrous part of temporal bone and this is the transverse sulcus which lodges the transverse sinus the tentorium cerebelli has got a free margin which is shown in dark blue color and an attached margin which is shown in light blue color now let's trace the attachments of the attached margin the attached margin is attached posteriorly to the transverse sulcus and then anterolaterally it's attached to the superior margin of petrous part of temporal bone and the anterior end is attached to the posterior clinoid process once again i repeat the attachments of the attached border the attached margin of tentorium cerebelli is attached to the transverse sulcus superior margin of petrous part of temporal bone and the posterior clinoid process the free margin as the name suggests is free and 
The anterior end of the free margin is attached to the anterior crinoid process. So the only place where the free margin is attached is the anterior crinoid process. Now this free margin overrides the attached margin and gets inserted into the anterior crinoid process whereas the attached margin is attached to the posterior crinoid process. Now here a triangle is produced which is called as oculomotor triangle in which you will find the oculomotor and the trochlear nerves. Let's see the sinuses related to the tentorium cerebelli. We have the transverse sinus on either side situated in the posterior part of attached margin along the transverse sulcus. Then we have the superior petrosal sinuses along the upper margin of petrous part of temporal bone. Then we have the straight sinus which is present in the midline at the site of attachment of posterior end of fast cerebri to the tentorium cerebelli. Thus, the sinuses related to the tentorium cerebelli are transverse sinus, superior petrosal sinus and straight sinus. Now, let's see about the fast cerebelli. As the name suggests, the fast cerebelli is also a sickle shaped fold which projects into the posterior cerebellar notch. The base of the fax cerebelli is attached to the inferior surface of tentorium cerebelli in the median plane. Its apex divides into two and is lost along the margins of foramen magnum. The posterior margin is attached to the internal occipital crest and encloses the occipital sinus. The anterior margin is concave and free. The diaphragma cella is a small circular fold of dura which forms the roof of hypophyseal fossa. To study the attachments of the diaphragma cella, we should know about a few bony prominences. This is the body of the sphenoid in which we have the cella tersica. Now, this is the tuberculum cellae which is present anterior to the hypophyseal fossa. The hypophyseal fossa lodges the hypophysis cerebri or the pituitary gland and this is the dorsum cellae. So two points which we should know here are the tuberculum cella and the dorsum cellae. This is the diaphragma cella which forms the roof of the hypophyseal fossa. The anterior border of the diaphragma cella is attached to the tuberculum cellae and the posterior margin is attached to the dorsum cellae. Now, as the pituitary gland is present below the diaphragma cella, the stalk of the pituitary pierces the diaphragma cella creating a hole in the diaphragma. Thank you for watching this video. Hope it was useful. Feel free to post your comments. Thank you.